All right, in this example, we're, gonna, we're given the series representation for sine x as x minus x to the third over 3 factorial plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial, etc. We're going to find a power series representation for the function x times cosine x minus sine x. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is find a power series representation for cosine x. And well, um, we know that if we take the derivative of sine x, we get cosine x. So I'm just going to take the derivative of the right side. So the derivative of 1x will be 1. Then we'll get 3x squared over 3 factorial plus 5x to the fourth over 5 factorial uh, minus 7x to the sixth over 7 factorial, etc. Well, we can simplify this. Uh, the 3 over 3 factorial will just leave us with 2 factorial in the denominator. Then we'll have x to the 4th. 5 over 5 factorial will simplify to 4 factorial. And then x to the 6th over uh, 6 factorial, etc. All right, so we've now got a series representation for cosine x. Uh, to find x times cosine x, we'll just multiply you know, both sides by x. So we'll definitely have to distribute this. All right, so I almost wrote a 5 factorial there mistakenly. So uh, what we'll be left with when we distribute will be x minus x to the third over 2 factorial um, plus x to the fifth over 4 factorial minus uh, x to the seventh over six factorial, dot, dot, dot. Um, and now we can just compute, you know, x cosine x. Uh, so if we do x cosine x, and then we subtract away our uh, series expansion for sine x. So our series expansion for sine x is going to be x minus x to the third over three factorial and then we said it was plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial uh, minus x to the seventh over 7 factorial, dot, dot, dot. So I don't know how cleanly things are going to work out here. But I think we can see what's going to happen here. So let's see. So again, this is now going to be x cosine x minus sine x. Kind of done a couple steps in here at once. So x minus x, that would cancel. It looks like we would be left with a positive x to the third over 3 factorial. And we would have a negative x to the third over 2 factorial. So we could always simplify this, but I'm going to leave it here for now. Um, let's see, we've got x to the fifth terms. It looks like we would have a positive x to the fifth over um, 5 fact. Let's see, excuse me, positive x to the fifth over 4 factorial minus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. And then we would be left with, okay, I guess the next one would be, we could make it positive x to the seventh over 7 factorial, minus x to the seventh over 6 factorial. And then I guess the next one um, we'll have to the, uh, the ninth power. And notice kind of the pattern. So the pattern, you know, they're jumping up by 2, the exponents. Um, they're kind of alternating. So 3 factorial, 2 factorial. And then the 5 factorial is the larger one, and it kind of switches 5 factorial, 4 factorial, and then back to the 7 factorial over 6 factorial. I think we could even write one more. So I guess we would have x to the 9th uh, minus an x to the 9th. So in this case, uh, I guess we would have a 9 factorial here, and we would have 8 factorial here. And again, we could keep expanding this out. So you could obviously simplify these things a little bit, um, I'm going to leave it like this, but that's the basic idea to find sometimes these more complicated series expansions. You'll just kind of, you know, take derivatives, multiply things out, and do some arithmetic, and hopefully it'll come out uh, a little bit cleaner. So, uh, you know, this one to me is not bad. I definitely see the pattern, see what's going on. If I had to, I could certainly rewrite this in summation notation. But I think for now, let's just leave it there, and uh, we've got our series representation.